Okay, today we will start with another welding process which is referred to as electro gas, electro gas welding. As we have seen in the electro slag welding that the heat of the molten slag was used that is the joule heating of the molten slag was used to generate the necessary heat for melting of the electrode as well as the parent metal. Here in the electro gas welding this is a kind of a one can say a one step uh, well a, a kind of a development further from electro slag welding, but at the same time somewhat similar to that of gas metal arc welding. In gas metal arc welding we have seen the welding arc and the molten pool is shielded by a inert gas medium. Here also in electro gas welding it is it's, it is shielded by inert gas medium. So, this is also an arc welding essentially it is not like unlike electro slag welding where there is no arc it is the uh, joule heating the resistance heating of the molten slag that is what is used. But in electro gas welding it is again an arc welding it is a fusion welding process the heat source being the electric arc and it is shielded by the gas inert gas. So, the difference what is the difference then between uh, gas metal arc welding and this the difference is in gas metal arc welding the gas continuously keeps flowing right and that is used in all positional welding, but this is again a vertical welding process as that of as a like uh, electro slag welding and here the gas is fed the gas remains in that position which is covered by that similar kind of shoes what you have seen in case of electro slag welding that means a molten pool is formed and the sliding shoes they slide up the uh, plate surfaces vertical plate surfaces and the uh, shielding medium is the inert gas which is uh, put there right. So, that is how we see that it is a very useful welding uh, method in which one can weld very thick plates like in electro slag welding here also one can go up to thicknesses of uh, uh, around 100 millimeter thick and the welding can be done at one run at a single run. So, obviously, the then uh, compared to a conventional gas metal arc welding it leads to a very uh, substantial savings cost savings because uh, if you have to weld a uh, plate of say 100 millimeter thick and that you will have to if you have to do with a conventional gas metal arc welding you will have to do several runs because the deposition rate is much less whereas if I use electro gas welding then one can go uh, that welding deposition rate can be made much higher and welding can be done at one run. In this process there are the some of the features it uses solid or cold wire core wire means in the core at times flux is used that is called flux core wire like uh, just the opposite of the uh, electrode welding electrode for manual welding. In manual welding you have the flux coating outside outside the metal electrode imagine that's just the reverse of it you have the electrode with a flux inside that means that it is a electrode having a fine hole at the center which is filled up with a flux. So, that is what is referred to as flux core wire. It produces smaller heat affected zone, it produces a weld joints with better notch toughness, notch toughness means impact strength compared to electro slag welding. That means here, so or in other words if you want a, a I mean a superior uh, mechanical properties can be achieved with electro gas welding as compared to that of electro slag welding because these are the two welding methods wherein you can do welding of very thick plates in a single run. 
so in a single round so th that that's how both these methods are very useful for welding of vertical joints and especially in shipbuilding or offshore industry you may have such long vertical joints of very thick plates right so these two methods are uh, very much suitable for uh, for this purpose of these two electro gas is a superior method one can say because it gives me a better mechanical property it gives me better notch toughness that means the impact strength of the joint achieved is better it gives an advantage of extra melting of electrode wire leading to high deposition rate and produces less molten base material thereby resulting lesser heat affected zone what does it mean means it with electro gas you can achieve a <coughs> higher deposition rate it's a high deposition rate welding but at the same time it produces lesser heat affected zone the heat affected zone in electro slag welding is more heat affected zone means if you recall once again uh, say a conventional butt welding if, if it is done suppose the the two plates butt welding has been done and the fusion zone looks like this this is my fusion zone so the heat affected zone would be the zone just adjacent to this. This is what is referred to as heat affected zone that means it is between the fusion boundary and about 1000 degree isotherm right because this particular this particular line which refers to the fusion boundary that refers to what is the melting temperature isotherm essentially is not it. That means melting temperature of steel is around 1500 degree centigrade because this shaded zone is the fusion zone this is my fusion zone that means there the total fusion took place fusion took place means what that means the this boundary line refers to the solid liquid interface line or in other words this is the isotherm of 1500 degree centigrade means along this line maximum temperature attained was 1500 so similarly if i can locate a line where 1000 degree was attained so that that zone in between is the is the zone which is called heat affected zone this this part is called the heat affected zone what happens here here your microstructure recrystallization takes place right microstructure recrystallization takes place so either the grains become finer right or become coarse either it, it it turns fine or coarse or both essentially what happens immediately closer to the boundary of the fusion zone you have a fine grain structure little away from that we have a coarse grain structure anyway in other words the heat affected zone is the is the one can say location in the, within the weld, welded joint which has a different material property compared to the parent material property why because the microstructure has changed and within that zone a smaller part would be of fine grain structure fine means finer than the parent metal and rest would be coarse grain structures so will be coarser than the parent metal and as you know fine grain structure gives you superior uh, mechanical properties right and coarse grain structure gives inferior mechanical properties right or in other words a good welding procedure would be one which produces minimum width of heat affected zone minimum width of heat affected zone right 
So, that is why it says here that the electro gas welding produces smaller heat affected zone whereas smaller means what smaller as compared to that of electro slag welding. In electro slag welding a larger heat effect zone occurs why because the heat resident time of the heat at a given location is much higher because there the molten slag is floating there on top of the molten metal which is at a much higher temperature. What temperature? More than 1500 degree centigrade right. So, the quantum of heat at one place is much more. So, it gets, gets enough time for the heat to get conducted along the plate because more the more the heat get getting conducted you, you have this isotherms shifted away is not it. If I hold the heat for a longer time then this isotherm of 1500 also will shift to some extent and the isotherm of 1000 also will shift further means what that means more heat is getting conducted more zone is getting uh, a temperature rise to about 1000 degree centigrade. So, you have a wider heat affected zone. So, that is what in electro gas that does not happen means here you have a lesser heat affected zone. So, it is a better welding process that is why it gives a better notch toughness compared to slag welding. Well, if we summarize the cell in features this electro gas welding is a automatic welding process like electro slag welding and uh, <laughs> okay, you can tell I am in the class. Okay. It, it, uh, uh, it is an automatic process, it welds only in the vertic vertical direction right. The weld pool is bound either by two sliding copper cooled uh, water cooled copper shoes or it has a water cooled copper shoe in the front and a ceramic backing strip at the back because say two vertical plates are there is being welded. So, it has to be covered from both the sides if I say this side is the four, four front portion and this is the back portion. So, either there are two copper shoes which slides up or a copper shoe as well as a ceramic shoe. The filler, uh, filler wire electrode is fed through a copper nozzle, electrode is melted by a shielded arc. Uh, that means melted by shielded arc means what? It is nothing but the uh, entire molten zone as well as the arc is shielded by a uh, I mean a gas shielding is only provided. It starts on a run up plate and finishes on a run off plate. Constant current DC power supply is generally used and electrode is generally kept positive that means DC EP power supply is used electrode is kept positive because of the simple reason I want to melt more of electrode at a time that means higher melting rate is desirable. So, the electrode is kept positive. What is the process? Once the arc is initiated in the arc it electrode and plate ages along the particle group melts forming an oil pool covered sideways with the covered copper shoes that means a oil pool is formed and that oil pool is continuously maintained right. With further feeding of electrode in the weld pool the molten volume increases. In relation with the ascending rate of the weld pool volume the welding nozzle and the copper shoes are pulled upwards like same in that case of the uh, electro slag welding here also you have to synchronize the lifting up of the uh, shoes as well as lifting up of the welding nozzles which is feeding the electrode. In the process the molten material at the lower end of the group solidifies and the process continues till it reaches the upper end. Starts on a run up plate, run up plate means essentially it is starting on a base plate and which finally 
makes the bottom part of the uh, of the weld zone of the weld pool which holds the molten metal continues to a runoff plate that means it goes out because it, it, the welding should continue beyond the plate edge if it does not continue then the plate edge will remain unwelded then again you will have to weld there. So, it will continue beyond that and that extra that is what is called run off plate the run off plate will be cut out. Synchronization of the feeding of the electrode and moving up of the shoes is obviously extremely important. Any mismatch in this synchronization may lead to arc instability or stubbing of electrode both ways. If it is going up faster, electrode is not moving at the right speed, then it will stub means it will actually touch the molten metal pool and touching the molten metal pool means that arc will get extinguished instantaneously there will be sudden drop in the current. So, the process will stop. So, if that happens then you will have to restart the arc and that may give rise to inadequate fission causing welding defects locally. That means, these processes like same uh, in the electro slag welding also that you cannot afford to as such you cannot afford to have a stoppage in between the process because the moment it stops to restart it becomes difficult not only difficult it leads to local defects and those defects will be difficult to rectify because here we are talking about welding of very thick plates. Well, this electro gas welding it is being termed as single electrode that means there is a possibility of multi electrode welding also it only signifies that if I say single electrode electro gas welding that means there can be a multi electrode also. The whole idea is single electrode and double or multi electrode is if I need if I have to weld a much thicker material thicker plate then I need higher still higher deposition. So, for that one may have to use multiple electrodes. So, we will see what this single electrode is. This is to reduce the heat input a fine diameter wire is used with lower welding current and narrow groove. Narrow groove means you make the weld uh, uh, the joint geometry the weld joint geometry having a like one is this this is what is referred to as as we have said square bar right this is a v group now this angle if i make it much smaller this is what is referred to as narrow group that means this group make it narrow there are aspect that means one of the extreme case of this is the square part they just become parallel right other extreme is a very wide group right. So, narrow group means narrow group welding means you have to deposit less amount of material again. So, obviously, it is better best would be square part best would have been square bar, but in square bar you may have difficulty in getting fusion over the entire zone right. That is why this V V uh, V grooving is done and now if I make it wider then the, there is a chance of much higher heat input because much higher volume of molten metal will be there right. So, that is how it says that it for reducing heat input one goes for a narrow groove welding. So, there is another corollary from this that means to have a uh, where distortion is of uh, very uh, very important issue that means the dimensional uh, deformation because as you know when you do welding it generates uh, stresses and leads to some dimensional deformation structural deformations which are referred to as distortions. So, if distortion of is of is of great importance then one should go for a welding process which leads to lesser distortion 
one of that is a narrow groove welding. Why? Because here the heat input required is less and once the heat input required is less, your resulting distortion will be less. Right? So, a narrow groove welding <coughs> results in lesser distortion also. To attain a sound weld bit formation, the welding wire is oscillated in the plate thickness direction. So, this is another aspect you can see. Here, the uh, electrode is oscillated uh, somewhat schematically, it is shown like this. This is the uh, view, I mean, in the elevation view, this is the plant view. This is what is the these are the two plates, this white part, these are the two plates being welded. Here you have the ceramic backing strip, here is the water cooled copper shoe, right. And this is that narrow group, what has been formed, narrow group. What I was talking about here, the narrow group, right. So, this is what is the narrow group and the electrode is fed like this and the electrode is oscillated along the thickness as if as if you are depositing material over the thickness right so that is what it is the it is oscillated over the entire plate thickness this enables this oscillation pro process enables proper welding with adequate reinforcement on both sides because you need to have the reinforcements on both the sides right also reduces the heat input and the amount of weld material. How much weld material is going that that reduces as well as the heat input. Heat effect is on toughness and the welding efficiency substantially increases by which by oscillating the nozzle, the oscillating the electrode. If we oscillate the electrode, it leads to a, a higher welding efficiency results in a narrow weld bit and narrow heat affected zone. It can be gainfully used to weld steel plates up to even 50 millimeter thick. Okay. This is what is schematic description of the thing. That means, even of the order of 50 millimeter thick plates can be welded. So, here you can see this is a wider zone where, where you have the uh, uh, well, uh, this this uh, the the fused metal the fused metal here is supported by the uh, backing strips one at the back and one at the front. Those strips has a profiled surface to accommodate for the reinforcement, such that you you get that weld bit, you get that reinforcement on the front surface as well as on the back surface, right? And the electrode is oscillated, oscillated to and fro along the thickness direction such that one can have a proper uh, uh, proper uniform deposition all along the thickness. Right. Through this nozzle, the inert gas is fed in. Right. This is a schematic representation. Well, for steel plates exceeding 50 millimeter welding defects, I mean with single electrode welding if we do, we have said that up to 50 millimeter it can do suitable welding. If the plate thickness exceeds 50 millimeter, then welding defects are generated when using the oscillating single electrode process. Essentially, lack of fusion takes place. These are actually, well, these are actually, there, there is, uh, I mean, one can say that these are the upper limit of the process. That means, if I want to do implement implement so called electro gas welding for plates of say 70 millimeter thickness, it will not do a good job. That means, there will be a possibility of defects coming in or in other words electro gas welding using single electrode, it has a limitation, it can weld up to a plate of thickness of maximum 50 millimeter. Beyond that, you have to look for some other method, that, that is what it says. To handle these increased plate thicknesses, necessary dwelling time for an arc to fully fuse a groove phase is insufficient. 
when only using a single electrode even if arc oscillation width is increased. What does that mean? That means, if I have a thicker plate, even a thicker plate, then one can try this oscillating width to increase the oscillating width such that I deposit sufficient metal. But the trouble is what happens? The heat available, the arc heat available becomes insufficient the dwelling time of the arc heat that means the arc at this level should be present for the sufficient time such that it fuses the parent metal both sides right I mean, I mean both sides the here both sides the parent metals are fused along the entire thickness as well as necessary <laughs> electrode is also melted and gets deposited but if it is too wide it is moving up and down the arc, right? you will have to do it at a certain speed. If you do it very slow, then the metal at the front will get solidified or by the time it travels there, metal at the back gets solidified. Right? If you do it too fast, then enough heat is not going. So, there is a limitation up to 50 millimeter, it can be done uh, with uh, desirable qualities. Beyond that, a single electrode is not a feasible solution. So, comes the necessity of double electrode electro gas welding. So, what is done here? Welding of such thick plates and oscillating two electrode system is used. Right? <coughs> here also direct current power sources are used. One of the electrode is made positive and the other is kept negative because there is again other difficulty. This provides a stable arc because when when you are doing a double electrodes see i mean the schematic is similar only thing in case of only difference is instead of a single nozzle you have two nozzles and both of them oscillating simultaneously now the gap between the two nozzles means the gap between the two electrodes that i can plays a role because if both are positive then there will be repulsion in the arc column so what has been found is that they are kept one is kept positive other negative that gives us uh, gives us a, a stable r if if uh, both are of same polarity then arc becomes unstable and leads to high amount of spatter possibly because of continuous repulsion between the arc there will be a high amount of spatter as well as the arc tends to become unstable and also with electrode positive we get a wider bead formation and less penetration right because this again is as you know as the electrode is positive more heat is generated in electrode so it causes a less penetration but a wider bead formation means more melting of the electrode leading to a wider bead a narrow polarity a, a negative polarity will give a narrow bead and deeper penetration so, you get the advantage of both because you need a wider bead also you need because it is more thicker material and you need proper penetration. For a wide single V group, the electrode on the wider group surface is made positive and the electrode on the rear is made negative. That is another aspect that means here suppose wow. Um, say schematically it is something like this. So, along the wider group you, you, you have the electrode uh, is, is, is kept positive and the electrode closer to the narrower end is kept negative. is kept negative. The electrode on the wider uh, side is positive on the narrow side is negative right. Because you see on the here it is kept positive means what? It is a wider side you need more deposition of the metal more electrode melting is required. So, you keep the electrode positive. So, firstly we have seen 
we have seen that we will not keep both of them of same polarity. We will have to keep one of them positive, another negative. So, then automatic question comes which one positive, which one negative. So, this is the logic of keeping the front, keeping the one which is on the wider side of the opening positive. The logic is that you need more melting of electrode. So, that is how that becomes positive, the other automatically becomes then negative. So, this is what is schematically it is represented. You have two electrodes in tandem which are oscillated together, rest other aspects are same. So, this is a typical geometry of that. Suppose, you have a 80 millimeter wide plate, then the group as you can see is quite narrow because with over a 80 millimeter dip the face opening is only 25 millimeter and the uh, root gap at the narrower end is 10 millimeter. So, the difference you can see all the other bot welding processes as I was telling you the minimum root gap the root gap is this particular distance the distance between the two plates at the narrower end right. In case of a square bot of course, the root gap both at the bottom and at the top are same because it is a square part. There is no edge preparation, but if it is a V group, then the gap at the bottom or the minimum gap between the two plates are referred to as root gap, right. So, in all bot welding cases, the root gaps are of the order of it, it varies from 0 to well around say. 5 millimeter maximum, right. But here you see the so called root gap is equivalent in this case, here it is about 10 millimeter in electro gas welding, right. So, that is what is the difference that means because here the aspect is somewhat different, not in case as we do in case of uh, butt welding. Well, these are some of the typical uh, welding parameters. Uh, as you can see, uh, say a welding of a 70 millimeter thick plate, the first electrode is fed with 420 amperes, whereas the second electrode is with 460 ampere. That means there is a little bit of difference in the front and the uh, I mean the ampere is in the two electrodes, right. So, the, these are some of the sample uh, uh, weld, weld parameters. The welding voltage one interesting thing uh, one can see in electro gas welding is the welding voltage is generally very high is of the order of 40 volts. Whereas, in gas metal arc welding if we look into the welding voltage would be of the order of uh, 22. 20 to 30 volts maximum, right? 20 to 30 volts maximum, and the welding current, if it is a manual gas metal arc welding, well, the welding current also will be less. It can be of the order of 200 to 50 ampere, right? Here, here the welding current. You see, if I, uh, uh, in case of some much dark welding, one can go up to welding current of 1000 ampere if not even 1500 ampere depending on plate thicknesses and at what uh, how many uh, runs you are doing it will be like that. Like for example, if you weld a plate of say 12 millimeter thick at a single run, then one can go up to a current of, of the order of 700 ampere, right. But here you see a 70 millimeter thick plate is being welded, the current is only 400 in one electrode again another around 400 in another electrode. So, that way one can say total current is only 800 ampere approximately total current, but the plate being welded is 70 millimeter thick and that too at one run, right. So, that is how the, these processes are very, very effective, very efficient process, but of course, the voltage level is much higher here. The shielding gas use is generally carbon dioxide, 
in electric gas welding, the 100 percent carbon dioxide shielding is done. Obviously, carbon dioxide will be used when we do welding of steel. Here, we are talking about welding of carbon manganese steels, not stainless steels or any other non ferrous material. If you weld non ferrous material, obviously, carbon dioxide cannot use to go for argon or argon helium combination. So, welding consumable and backing strip. So, these are the important aspects that backing strip means this, these backing strips which is supporting the molten metal both sides, these at the back, these at the forward. So, design of those strips also uh, determines the weld quality. The configuration of the backing strip and the welding consumables play an important role in the amount of slag generated during electric gas welding and, and the subsequent quality of the weld deposit. Right. So, groove in the backing strip accommodates the slag that is generated from the use of the flux core welding wire, where from the slag is coming it, from the flux core. The, in the core there is a flux, so that is forming the slag. Why it is used? Because it, well, it improves the uh, improves the fluidity of the material, improves the arc characteristics, uh, helps in initiating the electric arc, uh, helps in stabilizing the electric arc, so and so forth. So having a flux core wire is good, but if you have that, you'll have to have a mechanism of getting the flux out of the molten metal, right? So, where it gets out, it gets out at the backing strips, obviously it should float out, right. So, whatever, so you will have to have a proper group which can accommodate apart from the reinforcement, the amount of flux which may get generated if I use a flux cord welding, uh, welding wire. To keep the slack generation to a minimum using flux cord wire. The first electrode near the face is of flux core type and the second electrode is a solid wire because ideal would have been if we use solid wire electrode because shielding here is being done by the gas, the inert gas or CO2 whatever is being used. But to take advantage of uh, or, or to get the additional benefits of flux, one can go for a flux core wire welding. So, now then it brings in a problem that means the slag forms, so we will have to accommodate the slag. Now, to minimize that uh, difficulty of handling the slag as well as get the benefit of uh, the flux core. So, what is done again a, 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 a compromise is done that means the one of the electrode is used with a flux core type, another one is used as a solid one like in submerged dark welding, we do not go for flux cord wire, there is no necessity because we are using solid flux, the whole shielding is being done by flux. So, having a flux core does not make any sense. So, there a solid wire is used, solid wire electrode. Similarly, here we are saying that the first electrode near the face means on the wider side, the first electrode used is, is a flux cord type and the second one that means this is a flux core type and the and the one which is at the rear is a solid solid one is a solid wire electrode right so thereby one uh, so called make a compromise on the usage of flux core wire reduces the slag generation at the same time gets the benefit whatever is there from a, from a flux core wire. So, this is the typical geometry of the ceramic backing strip for a single electrode, uh, uh, single electrode electro gas welding. So, here you can see that uh, a, a typical uh, groove is made for 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 accommodating the flux the slag as well as the molten metal such that it forms the reinforcement the shielding gas 
used is generally CO2, carbon dioxide is used. Using double electrode, the amount of shielding gas consumed per welding length is approximately halved compared to that of the single electrode welding. So, what you see is that when you go for a double electrode welding, then in fact, the consumption of shielding gas becomes half, becomes less as compared to the amount of metal getting deposited. Because to deposit metal from a single electrode, the amount of shielding needed remains more or less the same if I use two electrodes. But by using two electrodes, I increase, I double the deposition rate but the shielding requirement remains the same is the suppose for a plate thickness say a plate thickness of 40 millimeter plate is being welded and I go for a double, double electrode welding <laughs> right, I will have less I mean the cost of production will become less because I will be using the more or less the same amount of welding uh, this shielding gas but my deposition will become double. Deposition becoming double means what? Deposition rate becoming double means I finish the weld much faster. So, if I finish the weld faster means I consume less shielding gas. So, that is how overall costing becomes less. So, that is what it says that the amount of shielding gas consumed per welding length is approximately halved compared to that of the single electrode welding. So, per welding length whatever is the cost involved in case of a single gas single electrode welding, the cost involved will be more compared to that of a double electrode welding. The method works out to be more economical. What are the applications of these and how are the welding performances? Double wire electro gas welding with appropriate welding consumables and backing strips is a highly efficient process for single pass welding of 50 to 70 millimeter thick plates. Right? Double wire electrode is a good method for such kind of plates. Produces adequate top and bottom reinforcement by top and bottom means both the sides. Right? because this term top and bottom reinforced they are rather relative they relates to a horizontal plate where the top surface and the bottom surface right. but here the plates are vertical. So, in any case the top means the wider surface the wider opening is the top the narrower opening is the bottom or the back surface. So, produces adequate reinforcements it gives proper penetration, proper penetration means total fusion of the entire thickness right and it produces weld joints without defects such as lack of fusion. Why it is talked about? Because if I if such thickness plates are being welded using a single electrode there can be a defect of lack of fusion. Lack of fusion is a defect means not proper penetration of the in the uh, metal thickness. Deposition rate is almost twice with setup time being more or less the same. This is another aspect. <coughs> if you go for a double electrode welding, obviously the deposition rate becomes roughly doubled, but the entire setting up time for the welding because you see the welding is such a process that actual welding operation takes very less time. What time it takes? It depends on the what is the welding speed. Say the welding speed is half a meter per minute. What does that mean? That means a 10 meter long plate to weld it will take 20 minutes just 20 minutes a 10 meter long plate. But in reality if you weld a 10 meter plate you will find you have, you have spent about 2 hours. So, where the time has gone is the setting up time. First, you have to align the plates, set the welding instrument, set the electrode, check the alignment, right? all those things and then switch on the power 
and it starts welding say a automatic submerged arc welding right that means once every alignment is done you provide the power the electrode will be automatically fed and will deposit the required metal along the weld length and you will find from that point 20 minutes job is done but before that you have spent probably one and a half hours setting up the thing aligning the plate etc so that is what it says that the setting up time being more or less the same so why whether we are setting up for a single electrode or for a double electrode the setting up time is more or less the same so thereby process efficiency is nearly double to that of single electrode process here we are talking about double electrode process right the application and the performance of double electrode process so we see that the process efe efficiency is nearly double to that of the single electrode process amount of at the same time amount of shielding gas consumed per unit weld length becomes nearly half as i was saying because because the weld pool volume is not changing neither the weld joint geometry is changing right so the requirement of your shielding gas is remaining is totally remaining the same so that is how the requirement remaining same so if i compare that with that of the uh, length of the weld then one can say that it has become nearly half because the deposition rate has become doubled so my uh, unit weld length has increased the gas consumption has remained the same so thereby effective gas consumption becomes half double electrode process works out to be more economical that is one of the conclusion that means wherever if if one will have to do a electro gas welding then one should try to look into whether a double electrode process can be implemented if that is so then we have a more economical process operation it is a highly efficient automatic welding method for vertical position welding of steel plates having thickness of 50 to 70 mm stable weld metal penetration in single pass so it can be gainfully applied in shipbuilding applications for ultra large vessels where plate thickness are 50 millimeter beyond that means very those big vessels essentially as i was telling uh, uh, that application of electro slag welding same way for connecting the blocks the vertical side shell plates those welding are, are uh, done using this electro gas or electro slag welding well next uh, so this is all about the uh, some of the welding processes which uh, are widely used in shipbuilding so what we have talked about are all essentially thermal processes involving fusion right involving fusion or can be referred to as fusion welding whether it is a shielded metal arc welding right so one second just to summarize shielded metal arc welding then we had gas metal arc welding gas tungsten arc welding submerged arc then uh, electro slag and then electro gas so what happens all all of them are fission welding process only in case of electro slag welding the heat generated is from not from uh, the electric arc but from the resistance heating rest all were from electric arc so all are essentially electric welding process 
as well as a fission welding process. Now, the moment a welding process becomes a fission welding process, then you have along with it some of the advantages and disadvantages built in in the system. One of the primary disadvantages is the moment metal is fusing, there is a chance of gas entrapment, there is a chance of slag entra entrapment, right. Solid the molten metal is getting solidified, so a very high thermal stresses work, so chance of solidification cracking. So, all these defects are probable or possible. I do not say that you do fission welding process, so you will have all those defects, no, but they are more likely to take place. So, if I avoid that entire process of fusion, then all those defects are uh, or, or, or difficulties are avoided, right. That means, if I can uh, develop a, a welding method wherein I do not melt the material, so it becomes a process wherein I do not have all those difficulties related to fusion. So, one such method, uh, so where we do not melt the material is referred to as solid state welding. because in, in the fusion welding, the material was going in the liquid state, in the liquid phase. Here, we are not going in the liquid phase. So, it can be referred to as a solid state welding. Right. One of the method is referred to as friction star welding. Friction star welding, right. So, we will see what is this method here the primarily as you can see it is a solid state joining technology the joining method and uh, as you can see it is not a very very old technique it is patented as sort of late as 1991 only it sort of came into being a very new technique whereas all the electric arc welding methods they are old pre-war. I mean many of those methods were in full operation and use in the time of uh, uh, I mean uh, at the time of second world war. Well, so that is what it is, it is a fairly a new technique. It involves joining of metals without fission or filler material as I was saying there is no fission taking place and once no fusion taking place means there is no need of filler metal also. In all the other fusion welding processes we have seen there is a filler metal generally always there is a filler metal. The filler metal can be a, can be a separate filler metal or can be the electrode itself acting as the filler metal right that means it, it gets melted and gets deposited. But here the question of filler metal is not there. That means in this process the question of any square part, V groove, wide groove, narrow groove, nothing occurs. So it has to be that root phase, root gap should be zero, right? Because there is no, since there is no filler metal means it cannot afford to have any gap between the plates or gap between the edges which are being joined, welded. Well, however, there is also a thermal process like we said the welding we talked about are the thermal processes involving fusion, it was there all the previous welding techniques. In this solid state process, it is also a kind of a thermal process that means some amount of heat is obviously generated, but heat is not enough or we do not hit that much heat that it leads to fusion. So, here what we see that about 80 percent of the melting temperature is attained. That means, in this process friction star process the whatever heat is generated that is about 80 percent of the melting temperature. So, it is most this technique is most suitable for welding of long flat panels for long long haul windy welding it is good.
obviously this is not be a very convenient process for very small and short weldings for long panels like uh, say a deck panel you will be fabricating or the bulkhead panels you are fabricating wherein you have to do the do the butt welding of of 10 meter 50 meter length so this uh, solid this friction star welding is a good method for that well so this is the uh, so called the basic features of the process and now let us see what the process is here it works under the combined action of the frictional heating and mechanical deformation what happens is the whatever heat is generated that is uh, that is generated by the frictional forces acting between the welding tool here in instead of a welding electrode or a welding torch you have a welding tool right you have a welding tool which rotates at a given rpm so that tool when it comes in touch in contact with the plate material to be welded that friction generates the heat right and the tool we will see some of the typical tools which has a small nib kind of a thing which penetrates along the joint penetrates along the thickness and keeps rotating so in the process what happens that rotation it generates enough friction and that friction generates sufficient heat to plastify the material because as we know the if we look into the material properties of say steel if we draw the uh, uh, temperature versus yield stress di uh, variation of the yield stress with temperature we would find uh, a variation somewhat like this somewhat like this what this temperature would be this is say room temperature what this temperature here should be tell me what do you think at this point the ill stress is zero this is the melting temperature this is the melting temperature right melting temperature means at the, or also it is referred to as re, referred to as liquidus temperature at this point that metal is liquid so it does not sustain any stress anyway so what we said sometime back that it attains say around 0.8 the melting temperature 80 percent of the melting temperature so say it is here that means my I, I attain a temperature level of this right so there the stress is so much or in other words much less than what is there at the room temperature or in other words the metal is at a uh, at, 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 at a state that means the the stress level needed is much less to take it to the yield point stress because you will have to attend only this much okay well so in the next class we will see further how this works the solid state welding process